at y'all, Minneapolis. What's up, man? What's up? I'm hollering at the Minneapolis landlords, right? People in the Minnesota, Minneapolis, Minnesota area that are trying to get their real estate dreams off the ground, but they're having trouble affording to get into the business, man. What if I told you I can take you from spectator to full-on investor, and it's only going to be like 13 Gs? Let's go. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. My name is James Wise and I am here to help you invest in real estate, right? Not a lot of money needed either, right? Today I'm working with my guy Mark. He's an investor from Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I think a lot of people in the Minneapolis area are going to be dealing with the same issue he had, right? There ain't no properties to buy, right? No no cash flow rentals, right? Especially not ones if you, you don't have a lot of money, right? Uh, it's 2022, man. Markets are up. Stuff's expensive these days, right? So Mark hooked up with me. I don't focus on finding what ain't there in Minneapolis, y'all. It ain't there. You ain't getting a rental for 13 k in Minneapolis. It's not happening, okay? Boo! That's not happening. So if you're still watching the video because you thought that there was going to be a house around the block from you in Minneapolis for 13 k I'm sorry. There won't be. Don't, don't leave yet, though. Don't leave. Because let me explain, man. Let me explain. You shouldn't worry about investing, like, down the block. You should worry about investing where you can get the highest return on your investment, right? So that's why Mark hooked up with me. I don't focus on where Mark lives. I focus on where the numbers make sense, right? So Mark, you've been sending me properties, uh, various types of properties, and you're new to the market we're operating in, this cash flow market where all the properties make the most sense, right? You're new to it. You don't understand it uh, as much as a local would, right? That's why you hire me, right? That's what I'm here for. And, uh, you know, we've been going and going and looking at stuff and, Currently, you're working with a lender that uh, this specific lender requires you to have a loan amount of 75 k And I think what that's done, Mark, is that has caused you to look at properties that are overpriced. You keep sending me deals that like, yo, bro, we don't have to spend that much money, right? So I think it's a combination of you're trying to appease your lender, number one. Number two, you're, you're focused too much on what pricing you're used to seeing in Minneapolis. We could do stuff a lot cheaper, right? So I got a property. Only going to require 13 k Now, your current lender, maybe he doesn't want to do the deal because it's too low uh, stakes for him. We do have other lenders. Or what you could do is you could take it down cash if you really wanted to and then just worry about refinancing out later, right? But I think this is the kind of thing maybe me and you should be looking at, dude. I think, uh, you know, you're just trying to stick a round peg in a square hole, and I think you might be spending too much money. So I, right, how often do you see this? How often do you see a real estate broker who's like, hell, bro, why are you trying to spend this much money? Let's spend this much money, right? It's not often that we try to get you guys to spend less, right? But I think for you, Mark, forget about Minneapolis right now. Forget about the prices you're used to. I got way better pricing. And forget about that current lender. We'll figure it out. There are lenders that loan on properties this cheap every day, right? So let's go over a deal that I think you should be focused on, dude. 13K is all you're going to need. And of course... I will handle all the property management and all the on-the-ground work. Let's jump into the numbers right after the break. Man, I hate those other real estate gurus out there. Those real estate gurus that lead you guys to believe fairy tales, lead you guys to believe in magic, lead you guys to think that there's going to be genies granting your wishes if you buy their course or their program. Like there's going to be hot girls in bikinis just popping out. That's not the real life of a real estate investor. And here on Holton Wise TV, we give it to you straight. Welcome back. Now we got to get into the numbers, right? Investing, you see a lot of people, a lot of people out there on the internet making promotional videos, doing this or that, teaching you guys, claiming to teach you guys how to invest in real estate. But you know what? They never actually do real deals with you, like live, right? That's what we do, right? Real deals. They give you a lot of rah, rah. If you think, if you open your mind to, to, to thinking big, you'll do big deals. Like, dude, bro, 
what the fuck does that mean, bro? Like, dude, you want some shit like that? Go fucking pay Tony Robbins. Go do a seminar. Jeez. What I'm doing, people, is real deals. Real deals with you. Analyzing real numbers. Making things happen for real. And then my team will manage the real properties for you. So you can live in Portland. You could live in LA. You could live in New York. You could live in New Jersey. All these places. Denver, right? All these places. What do they have in common, right? Incredibly high housing makes it very difficult to get started in real estate. Governments that are coming in and increasing the regulation on landlords on a daily basis, right? I'm here to help you guys get away from all that and manage the asset for you so it's totally passive, right? But I ain't just going to shoot you a song and a dance, right? I got the real deal here, the real property, the one we're looking at today. 925 West 17th, Lorraine, Ohio. 60 grand. 60 grand. We're going to do this thing for like 13 grand, okay? 13 grand out of your pocket. I'm going to get you a loan for the rest, right? That's why I love real estate, okay? Try doing any other business and getting somebody to give you 75% of the money over 30 years on a fixed interest loan, tax-deductible loan, right? Can you buy Bitcoin with a 30-year loan? No. Can you buy NFTs with a 30-year loan? No. Do you even really know what an NFT is? Because I sure as shit fucking don't. But you know what? I don't buy shit I don't fucking understand. So that's why I'd never buy one of those things, right? Can you start... A restaurant with a 30-year loan? No. And I understand restaurants, okay? I get, look at this thing. See this thing? I know what I'm talking about when it comes to food, but I still couldn't get a 30-year loan, right? You can get 30-year loans on real estate. That's why you guys should be investing in real estate, right? We're dealing with uh, historically low interest rates right now, dude. People are giving away the money, right? All you need to do is bring 13 grand to the table. So if you're not taking all that free money right now, why it's cheap, you're losing yourself, right? You're going to be stuck trying to do a business, I don't know, with your girlfriend on Etsy selling freaking dream catchers one day because you missed the wave of free money you could be getting. Well, it's not really free, but it's, it's basically free. It's so freaking cheap right now, right? So you do that to take down deals like this, right? So if you're in those expensive markets where you can't get started because you still got to bring 25% to the table, you go places like this, man, places like Lorain, Ohio, about 30 minutes outside the city of Cleveland. And we're going to steal this deal, dude. We're going to steal it, right? We got a house with one picture, no interior pictures. And this is part of the reason why we're going to steal this deal. It should really be worth more. Uh, you, you should not be able to pick it up for this cheap. And I'm going to try to get it even cheaper. I'm going to try to get it for you for 55 55 is our target price, right? And we're going to take advantage of some situation here. There's two. Two kinds of people that would buy this house, that can buy this house, okay? Person number one, none of you, because it's somebody who wants to buy it and live there, right? That's half the buyer pool, people that want to live in it. Well, guess what? There's a tenant in there, so boop. Half the buyer pool's cut out. You know what happens when half the buyer pool gets cut out? The price goes down, right? Supply and demand. We all understand that, yeah? Second type of buyer would be you guys, right? Real estate investors, okay? But here's the thing. The current seller is like a mom and pop seller. They don't really understand the real estate business. They're renting this thing for 600 a month plus water sewer. So it's like a net of 675 uh, That's another reason you could tell their mom and pop because they're having the tenant pay the water sewer uh for people outside of the the greater cleveland market it, it sounds crazy but that's really not uh, a feasible way to do it you have to as the landowner pay it uh and then just include it in your rent uh it's based on how ohio's landlord tenant laws are uh written and how the the water departments operate i have a full explanation of this on the fact on holtonwise.com so if you're confused as to why uh, you cannot separately bill the tenants for water sewer out here. Check my fact. It will go over it. I know it's a little sketchy, a little confusing. Unfortunately, uh, that's the way the cookie crumbles. So, like, the seller is getting a net rent here of about six seventy five. okay? About six seventy five. That's great because already half of our buyer pool, they're, they're done. They're not interested because they can't move in because there's a tenant living there. And then that leads you guys, investors. Well, guess what? A lot of you 
I like, dude, 60 k for a 675 rental, it's not a good deal. He said he can get it at 55 okay, but it's only a 675 a month rental, still not a good deal. Beautiful! I love that. I'm so happy a lot of people feel that way because that's where I come in. That's where a market expert comes in. This property, market rent, people, this is an $1,100 rental, right? Well, $1,095. You got to make it look good. You know what I'm saying? It's like $0.99 cent looks better than a dollar. dollar ninety nine instead of $2. You get what I'm saying, right? But market rent for a big old house like this to cash bank tenants or Section 8 tenants, we're looking at $1,095, right? That'd be $13,140 for the year. Under fixed and variable expense estimates, having my company do 100% of the work for you, you do nothing, totally passive, we'd be looking at clearing approximately 7418 If, because we have such a small buyer pool right now, because half the buyers can't live in it, so they don't want it, the other half of the buyers don't understand how much money is being left on the bone, so if we are able to pick it up for fifty five. You put down thirteen thousand seven hundred fifty. That's it. All you need, folks. Thirteen grand, and you are a freaking landlord, man. Forty-one k comes from the bank. If you don't have lenders, I got them. Shoot my team an email: sales at holtonwise dot com. I'll get them to you. If you're able to do the deal like that and get that rent up to market without a turnover, we're looking at a freaking thirty-nine percent return on your investment. Now, it's very important though that you understand the reality of the situation. That's like best case scenario. That we able to get the tenant from a net of six seventy five to like ten ninety five without a turnover. If they do move out, you'll have to do a turnover. Now we don't have pictures of the interior. Uh, I'm gonna guess nothing is new. Per the notes, it's like a long term month to month tenant. So I'm sure you're doing like a full turn, right? So I would imagine you're spending like a, like ten k, right? Uh, just assuming you're doing it all, right? We're going to do the inspection, right? Put our offer contingent on inspection. But, like, I've been in the game a long time. You do not get a house, a whole house, and have some dude or gal rent it for six seventy five a month for, like, many, many years and then have them move out and then you just walk in and go, Yeah, fuck's God! Sweep, sweep, sweep! Slap a for rent sign in the front yard and then you get new tenants at market rate. Right? That's not a reality of the rental property business. What's a more likely scenario is if this tenant moved out, you're doing a unit turn, which, of course, will skew your numbers. But we don't know for a fact that the tenant would move out before you got their rent up. What I always advise people to do is increase the rent slowly. I can almost guarantee you if on day one of ownership we give them a 30-day notice, because legally we can do it with a 30-day notice, hey, brah. Your rent's uh, 675 uh, but next month it's going to be 11 hundo. Uh, pay it or get the fuck out, right? You could, you could give them that ultimatum. It's your right, but uh, usually they'll get the fuck out, and then we got to spend like 10, 15K turning the thing over. I don't think that's the smartest thing to do, my opinion. Why the money's coming in, baby, keep collecting it. What I like to do is increase them slowly, right? They're at 675 Rent uh, Market rent is 1095 right? Do something small. Like, all right, man, new lease, you got to pay 8 And then the next year, go even bigger. Now you got to pay nine fifty. You know what I'm saying? Slowly work them up. Try to keep their butt in your unit, right? Because collecting a little bit of less rent every month isn't really going to sway your return. What does sway your return is not collecting rent for a couple months while we do a ten fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 uh, renovation, right? There's going to be enough turnovers in your life if you become a landlord, folks. You're going to deal with turnover all the time. What you do not want to do is create artificial turnover. You know who creates artificial turnover? Crappy landlords, right? They don't know what they're doing, right? You got to collect money. That's the name of the game, folks. Take money and put it in your pocket, right? Never be in a hurry to be like, no, stop giving me money. I want to take 15 k out of my pocket and send it this way, right? Don't do that, right? Just keep collecting as much money as you can, right? You're going to be working, moving your portfolio along, getting other rentals, adding it to your portfolio. There's always going to be turnovers happening, right? Keep that number to as few of them as possible. And by doing my strategy of slowly increasing the rents, it is, in my opinion, the best, smartest way to gain the most net profit overall in totality that's my thought but of course it would be your property so it would be up to you we can do either but you know who am i i don't know i'm just a dude who runs the biggest portfolio in my market and i've sold 200 million dollars worth of stuff 
you should probably listen to me. But if you don't want to listen to me, that's cool too. Because I also make like a ton of money when landlords do really stupid stuff. And then they get in over their head. And then they need me to come in and rescue them and or liquidate their property. Either way, uh, works good for me. But if you're trying to also make a ton of money, I would suggest you go slowly and avoid those artificial turnovers. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.